Hello, hello. Welcome to Wild Free Health. We are going to talk about self-care practices that improve your gut health and, uh, and boost your overall wellness. And we're not talking just any self-care practices today, you guys. We're going to think outside the box. So I'm going to tell you right now, take everything you've ever thought about self-care, everything you've ever been told, throw it out the window just for a few minutes and, and stick with me on this, okay? I know life gets crazy busy. And caring for your gut, caring for your health, caring for your mindset, it can feel overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be, and it doesn't have to be complicated either. So today what we're doing is we're diving into some fresh perspectives on self-care and exploring how even the simplest acts can greatly improve your health and your wellness. We are rethinking self-care. We often think of it as indulging in spa days, so facials, massages, going on expensive trips, taking a day off work to go to Disney World, Disneyland, things like that, right? But we don't have to go through all of that elaborate, all those elaborate actions. We don't have to go that dramatic because that self-care, that area of self-care, just one tiny piece of it. So it's time to change our mindset. It's time to open ourselves up to things that mass media and conventional thinking really don't want us to, to see. Self-care is about nourishing your body and your mind and your health in ways that resonate with you. Health isn't a one-size-fits-all concept. We are each unique individuals. We have unique DNA. We have unique backgrounds, lifestyles. I'm not one size fits all and neither are you. We're not a pair of clothes. We're not a big old shirt. So instead of feeling pressured to follow any trends, I want you to start thinking about what truly makes you feel good. The things in your day that bring you joy, whether it's a warm cup of tea, a special meal, a daily act like taking a shower or a walk or even reading your favorite book. These are all forms of self-care. So I invite you to break free from the conventional idea of self-care and think outside the box with me for a minute. Our gut health is closely linked to our overall well-being. Sometimes unconventional practices can have surprising benefits. You ever tried journaling? Putting your thoughts on paper, which reduces stress, it's, a, it's great for your gut, right? Engaging in creating activities like painting, playing instruments, they can all boost your mood they have a positive impact on your gut brain connection. And here's a surprising twist. Even the mundane tasks like washing your hands, washing your hands, they can all be part of holistic self-care. From a health perspective, good hand hygiene helps prevent the spread of harmful bacteria, right? We learned this during 2020. And at this point, if you don't know it, um, we need a little lesson, but I think at this point, everybody in the world knows, wash your hands, wash them often, but don't just go wash, wash, wash and run off. There's some tactics and some techniques that you can use to slow down the process just a smidge and invite joy into your world, invite a grounding aspect of it just within the minute or two that you're washing your hands. Okay. Ultimately, all of this benefits your foundation, your gut. Now, when we think about this, a balanced gut, it's crucial to your overall, overall immune system, right? And your well-being. So when we're clean and freshly clean, it can feel really, really healthy and really, I don't know, it, it can bring you joy, right? Think about how great it feels to walk out of a shower freshly bathed after a long, hot Texas summer. Anybody else out there melting? Or nice, clean, fresh hands after working in the garden? When you think about self-care, I want you to consider all the activities that bring you joy. Embrace your inner Marie Kondo. Seriously. It's not just about the objects in your house. Think about the actions and the activities that you do every day. What brings you joy? What puts a smile on your face? My morning coffee routine it's not about the coffee. It feels like a slow, steady wake up. My night owl, never going to be a morning person self, loves it. Even if I have to get the boys out the door with Brian, 
to make sure that they're on their way to school to be able to sit and just relax over a cup of coffee, whether it's tea, coffee, it really, the, the drink itself really doesn't matter. Just something that I can sit, not think, and slowly just give my body and my brain a chance to wake up. It brings a smile to my face and it doesn't even matter that some days it's going to take five minutes. Like I have five minutes and I'm in and I'm out. But I slow down for those five minutes and it makes the world a world of difference on my day. It really does, you guys. It puts a smile on my face. I don't feel like I'm running through my day for the rest of the day. It feels like I have a steady, stable balance throughout the day. So it's not about the drink. It's about the self-care act for my mind. Now, truth be told, the days that I don't do that, my ADHD can really take over. So when I have days that that doesn't happen, even if I have to stop midday for five to 10 minutes, I will stop and I will, I will do this one simple thing. I will sit down with a cup of something that took me longer than just pouring water into a cup. Has to be ice, a straw, something a little, a little extra, a little bougie in my drink. And once I do that, I feel much more productive. I'm happier. I feel grounded. And I just overall feel so much healthier. So simple things like that. My life, this works for me. This is one of the things that I know it brings me joy. I know that I feel better. I feel healthier when I do it. So I'm going to make sure it's in my day no matter what. So while we're in this out of the box thinking, take a few days, look at your life. Look at the things that you come back to every single day. What brings you joy? What actions bring you joy? These are self-care acts. So infuse those into your life and bring joy into that small part of your day because it can make a big difference in the rest of your day. And then once you kind of figure out what it is, hop back over and tell me. I'm curious what your habits are. You know my big one now. So let's hear about yours. I would love to hear what your joyful activity is for the day. What one thing you do, and I mean, granted, there's probably a million things that we do every day, right? But what one thing do you do that brings you joy that you can infuse into every single day and include that would get you back to center, that would help you feel more confident, healthier, stable, grounded, energized, put whatever characteristics there you want for how you want to feel in your day-to-day -day life. And once you figure out what that thing is, just keep doing it. I'm sure I'm not the only one with this. And if you don't realize this is a self-care habit, deep breath, it is. And it's okay. Self-care doesn't have to look like this pretty box. It can be something very simple. Now, obviously, there's some practical self-care tips to maintain your health. But since we're going outside the box, we're going to stay here. Think about your food. The way you clean your house. Could you include self-care into your daily routine in every single way possible? Absolutely. And there's one thing I, I, I saw recently. Um, that I wanted to make sure to mention during this episode. I saw a motivational speaker and he put a post up on TikTok and talked about the areas of your house and how each one represents an area of health. So a clean kitchen is health, your individual body health. Cluttered? Not so much. It means you're, it can indicate some struggles with your health, right? With your health maintenance, your health management, you're struggling with something. Um, neat freaks aside, does not this this doesn't explain you <laughs> um a clean bathroom indicates abundance and not just in finance we're talking about in health in love in relationships and all area of your life the living room is all about family and relationships and when the living room is clean and tidy it means that you have strong relationships that are loving and that are helping fuel positivity into your world not detract from them 
So a little TLC in all of these areas actually can impact your individual self-care, your individual health and wellness. The way we perceive things in our house indicates to our brain whether things are in abundance or whether they're in scarcity. And our brain's going to respond. And it may even respond with your hunger and your satiation. It's all related to that stress and that immune response. Crazy body of ours. So whether it's fact, whether it's perception, our brains can do a lot of things. So anything that we can do that can place a positive meaning and uplifting meaning on our actions helps us with our self-care. It improves our self-care. So we're going to actually continue this conversation with Heather Jones, a certified confidence coach for female leaders. I had a conversation with her recently, and our conversation will actually be aired next week. So one week from today, watch for that episode. If you are not subscribed already, go take care of that. Hit the notification button so that you can be notified when our episode with Heather or my episode with Heather comes out. She focuses on using self-care practices in very unique ways, pairing them with actions we already take throughout our day. So essentially, we are continuing this conversation that you and I are having today, next week. So hop over to notifications, hit that bell, and let's keep this going, all right? We want your entire day to feel healthy, to feel happy, and infuse confidence into your ever being. Confidence, healthy, happy, those feelings help your brain shift into healthier habits without you consciously having to do very much. It's like playing brain games with yourself. It's pretty fascinating if you really take a step back. If, if you like experiments, let, let's chat and I'll, I'll tell you what you can look for and, and we can just totally geek out on all of this. <laughs> we actually have geek out sessions in Wild Free Health in our community specifically for this because KJ and I are not the only ones geeking out about this stuff. So if this describes you, hop on over to the community and let's continue this conversation or just comment below and we'll keep chatting. Um, self-care, even, even for a minute, self-care, it breathes life into our brains. It breathes life into our bodies. These little tiny actions that aren't the big spa day, they aren't the big trip. There's just little things throughout your day that help you infuse health into every part of your being. So next week, we're going to dive even deeper into this out-of-box self-care, all right? And for now, let's, let's come back to a little practicality for just a minute. So you hear five typical recommendations every, in every, hey, here's some self-care video, right? So we're going to go over these, but we're going to look at these from more of an out-of-the-box thinking, okay? First, mindful eating. The recommendation is to choose slowly, savor each bite, so the satiation has a chance to, chat, to catch up to hunger, right? So let's make that a bit more of a self-care act to infuse joy. You can start cooking all of your favorites in healthier ways. The truth is a healthy dish uses whole foods and includes both healthy fats and healthy protein. So your favorite dish could logically be made healthier. 100% healthy? Maybe not, but what about 80%? Instead of just being mindful when you eat, create a reason to slow your bites down and savor each bite. Make the meals delicious. Healthy does not have to equal cardboard. Seriously, if it did, I wouldn't eat it. All right. <clears throat> hydration. Y'all know I, hy I, I hyper-focus on hydration. Keeping yourself hydrated can become a self-care act. It really, truly can. Eat your favorite food. Fruit, vegetables. Fruits have more hydration typically than vegetables. You get a sweet treat. Your body gets a little extra water, which means less that you have to drink. Make a cup of herbal tea. Chill it. Enjoy it over ice. Or enjoy it hot and then enjoy. Drop some fruit into your water to infuse it. You have any other ideas what you can do with water? There's a million of them. Start making a list if if water is a thing, anything is possible here, you guys. And what about gut-friendly food? Well, whole foods are gut-friendly foods. So if you're making your healthy dishes or you're making your favorite foods healthier and you're eating those and you're enjoying your food, then you're eating gut-friendly foods. 
tasty, delicious, included in your dishes, and you really didn't have to do anything more. And your brain will start craving those dishes. So now, stress management, y'all know we had to go there. Breathe life into your brain when you're stressed. Take your few minutes, imagine a commonplace, mind's near the water, deep breath in, deep breath out, do it three to five times. You can do this when you're washing your hands. You can do it when you're filling your cup up with water. You, you don't have to stop what you're doing to have some deep breaths. Just take some deep breaths. When you're done with three to five breaths, you're going to feel refreshed. You're going to feel renewed. It's going to give you a little bit more vivaciousness for like a minute. If you're super stressed, it could actually go a lot further than that. And it's a practice that you can do anywhere. So now sleep. Everyone talks about sleep, right? The number one tip I have for you is to start a wind down process about an hour, hour and a half before bed. It helps me with stress. It helps a lot of my clients with their stress management. But it also, in turn, helps you get a better quality night's sleep. And now that the boys are sleeping through their nights, most nights, I'm taking full advantage. So, there you have it, you guys. That is everything. Think outside the box. I invite you to get creative. I invite you to, to chat with each other and see what kind of off-the-wall, out-of-the-box self-care thing you can infuse into your day. And don't forget to join Heather and I next week as we continue this conversation and talk about some more unique self-care practices and take this discussion today to a whole other level. Self-care isn't about grand gestures. It's about consistent mindful choices that contribute to your overall well-being. So let's start redefining self-care, thinking think outside the box, and let's incorporate even the simplest act into your day, washing your hands with some deep breaths, just an example. Anything that's going to give you a significant impact in your gut health and your overall wellness. Thank you for joining me today. If you found these helpful, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification. You know what to do. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>